Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jeremy from North Creek Mail, Ontario. Hey, and this is Jack from emailsthatsell.com. Today, teardown. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple of cold emails to tear down. Let's get things started with an email all about uh, outsourcing software projects. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, subject line, available for software projects. Need help? Here's how the email goes. Hi, first name. You're hiring, and we have a community of software engineers looking for work. I invite you to join Orbit, Moonlight's free weekly email list where we feature engineers looking for contract work. Bullet points. It's free. Most candidates are from the USA. We screen candidates for quality and experience at tech companies. To get emails about engineers looking for work, sign up here for free. And then there's a, an entire link with HTTPS, WW, all that, uh, and signature. At the bottom of the email, it says, if you don't want to hear from me again, please let me know. All right. Should I kick things off? Kick it off, Jeremy. All right. I'm actually going to kick things off with something positive this time. So not a typical Jeremy bashing episode kind of thing. Oh, I'll keep it for later. I'm not going to bore you with torrential bashing stuff. So I'm going to start with a positive point. I think I like the subject line. I think it's a good indicator of what that person is providing. I'm reading this subject line and already I'm like, oh yeah, I want to read the body. It sounds interesting. What about you, uh, Jack? Yeah, subject's good. Um, it's got the, you know, the ingredients here, setting up the expectation for the body of the email. And I do like how they kicked off the email with an intro that signaled why they were reaching out to them. So they called out the fact that they were hiring and that they have engineers that can help. Maybe an idea that could have improved this, throw in the role they're hiring for and double check that they've got an engineer who can fill that, that may be a little bit more specific. Yeah, we're a big fan here about subject line as a contract. So I'm reading that, I want to know more, I'm reading the body and I kind of like trust that, that's cool. That's, yeah. that's what I want to know. Exactly. It's like, um, you know, you want your subject line to explain exactly what it is. That way, if, uh, you know, the subject line says there's a cat in this email, we expect the body to say meow, just following, you know, the subject line to the body. Moving on, there's something I don't like about this email, and it's the bullet points. I feel like though it's compelling, you know, it's uh, free, they're USA based, they, you know, have been screened for quality. Assuming they're reaching out to American companies, they all make sense. But uh, my recommendation, break those bullet points out across a couple different cold emails so that your content is easier to digest. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Whenever Jack and I are seeing bullet points, we're always thinking like, oh, how can we actually transform each of those bullet points into different emails or follow-ups? So that's really good. One other good point I like about this uh, email, and after that I should stop because it looks like I like it too much. They go a long way to make it about me. So they want to save me time. You know, they, they say, you know, you're hiring. So they really start about focusing on me and not really their product True. at the beginning, at least. So I think it's really good. It makes me feel comfortable. Like, oh, okay, that's an email that is for me. What's in it for me is going to be obvious, and I start reading it. That's cool. Okay, but everything maybe follows until we get to the CTA. <laughs> There's something a little bit unusual here. The call to action is to get the prospect to sign up to an email list. Thoughts on that, Jeremy? I said, what the hell? I actually stopped feeling that good as soon as I read, I invite you to join. Mm -hmm. It's just like... If you really were about all about me and helping me doing stuff and so on, I would be more like, would you be interested in me putting you on this list? Right. Just right. reply yes and I put you on. But, you know, making me doing the work, it's like, ah, uh, no, that doesn't uh, work so well anymore. Sure. Right. So, Jeremy, maybe they could have switched us around and said, would you like us to add you to this list? A couple other founders like yourself are also, you know, checking their inbox to find new engineers, for example. Yeah, super great. And then you can go into mode, you know, objection handling. And, and that's kind of what they're doing. I like their objection handling. Like what would go through my mind is like, oh gosh, someone trying to make me pay for being on their list. Mm. And I like that they say like it's free, but I think they could go one step further. Just do this email about like, it's a no effort to you and it's it's um, and it's at no cost to you. I think that'd be great if they choose this angle and then forget everything else mm. about their candidate coming from the USA, you know, that they screen candidate and stuff like that. 
and then choose one theme, maybe two, do three emails to start with and then, you know, A-B testing kind of thing and see which sure. one is resonating the most. But, yeah. but then keep consistent this theme. So like I mentioned, you know, if they do things for me, then they should subscribe me instead of me having to go and join thing. Right. And what I would make it more believable as well is they explain me what the sort of like business model that they have behind. Why is it free? You know, when people read like it's free, they're always like, what's the catch here? Sure. So if you really want to address the objection about like, how much is that going to cost me? And then you say it's free, it's only one part. So I would have done something like, hey, you're hiring. And I just wanted to let you know that we do have, you know, a community of engineers that we curated. And as part of this, we help promote some of the jobs that we find are the best on the internet. And that's why we'd like to, you know, advertise your job position to or very highly curated list. It's at no cost to you because that's part of offering to our engineers to, you know, go ahead and then hunt for those best, you know, sure. jobs. And in this case, it's like, okay, I get it. I know why it's free. It's because that's the other side that is paying, not my side. And they are going to send it to a list. Maybe I could say yes. Maybe I could say no. But all it takes me is just to say yes. It's a very low effort for potentially sure high reward. And then if I don't reply, the next list is say, hey, Jamie, in case you're just remember this offer from last week, it's still going on. Uh, I just realized I forgot to mention that in case you're wondering, all your engineers are actually highly curated, vetted, and so on. Sure. We just may want to make sure that they got access to the best offer without having to hunt themselves for, you know, and then dig in that sea offer on the internet. And then you kind of like do a little bit of a fox on a crow. Yep, you, you know, yep. you, you stroke my ego. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, my job is really good. Yeah. And right. then and then eventually, you know, it leads to me allowing you to put my job on their list. But the interesting thing would be what's the end game? Because they can basically do that without asking me. So what the end game here? Right. right. So that will be also maybe something they could address in the next photo up or something like that or be a bit more upfront about it. Because really, honestly, I just don't know. What's you know, going on? What's really the, the benefit in just, you know, grabbing a job and putting it into the list? They can do that nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So it would be probably more believable if they add an extra things. The only thing we add you is, it ask you in exchange is to do X and X being like a super small thing. Like uh, send us a picture of your office because that's, that's all elements of um, or unique selling point is that we show, you know, the office or the environment where people are going to work up. Something special yeah. that makes it relevant. I, I miss that, I think. And the PS section may be a good place to put this. Hey, by the way. Awesome. Yeah. So you can explain everything. And the last comment for me, I would like to know if it really is the best strategy to take a cold email prospect and push them towards a newsletter. Maybe it works best, but I would like to test that against maybe directly starting a conversation about their job hiring needs or just figuring out if they want to consider other providers, maybe a one-to-one -one conversation could be a little bit more productive than a newsletter, but I could be wrong, something worth testing. Yeah, one last thing I would remark here because we don't really see that often. Most of the time we like skip over the sort of like uh, signature at the end of the email. But in this one, there's something quite intriguing. It says John Smith, the title, and then there is a command say engineering. Now, I mean, I don't buy that, I'm sorry, but engineering actually doing called outreach for a company, it looks like really strange to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It, it could be an indication that uh, something fishy is going on. Not necessarily fishy, but something like they haven't nailed down something or they haven't really figured out exactly, or it's definitely not what I'm expecting. And it's definitely not going to raise the level of trust for that specifically. Yeah. Or they say founder, I say, okay, the guy is just, you know, at the beginning of his startup, he's just trying to, you know, he's hustling. Yeah, he's yeah. hustling, trying to make it work. And I would make it more understandable. Yeah. But engineering. Yeah. When was the last time you've seen, you know, a company putting their engineers only to do code it, outreach? Only in a highly technical email to another highly technical person. Yeah. Which isn't the case here. So okay. Yeah, make sure your job title and your signature matches what the email's about. Good good note there. Let's move on. We've got um, a couple more here. Subject, feedback tool for company name. All right, here's the email. Hi, first name. I found company on Crunchbase. It looks like a great service to insert main function. I've developed a survey tool which will give you plenty of customer feedback. Would you like to try it? Thanks. Go for it. Hmm. Um... um... 
A few things to say. It's a short email, so I like it. I can read it very quickly. I don't need like to feel that I need to invest a lot of time just reading yep. it quickly. Yep. I feel like the subject line was using a mouse and whisker approach, like feedback tool for quick mail. Yeah. Does that actually means he wants to give me feedback on quick mail or does he have a tool for right, feedback right. or does he want to recommend me to use a tool for feedback? So it's a sort of good usage of mouse and whisker, but it didn't sit so well for me. I would have probably preferred a subject line along the line of, you know, do you use any tool for feedbacks on quick mail? Or user feedback. Or user feedback. Yeah. Uh, that, oh. would have, that would have been a little bit. Uh, yeah. Mouse and whisker. Kind exactly. Of thing. That's true. I think that could have been, but maybe it's the nature of the tool itself that makes it complicated in a subject line. So anyway. I've yeah. got a couple on the, the first line here. It says, I found company name on Crunchbase. I think that's a li that's getting a little bit old. You know, just a quick, I found you here without anything else uh, tying that into something relevant. But I'll give them half a point, you know, a little bit better than nothing. No, it's a great point. I think in 2017, 2000, probably 18 early, you could get away with that. But I think it's, it's, it's over now because people know where they find or they don't care as much as to where to find prospect anymore. Yeah. Scraping's old news. Yeah. But the second line could be good. It really depends on how well they're nailing these merge tags. It says, it looks like a great service to main function. If they said, hey, I found quick mail on Crunchbase, it looks like a great service to email, I would have been like, mm, okay, not bad. But even better if they said, it looks like a great service to send outreach emails as an SDR. Okay, then they're really smoking here. Like it's it really depends how detailed they're going. But potentially a full point awarded for a basic yet personalized intro. Maybe even two actually, because it's kind of a, a good way of using a merge tag. And after that, it's just, you know, how they feel it, as you mentioned, is going to determine if it's good or not. Right. But it's the same thing with an intro line. You could put a merge tag intro, and then it could be like, hey, uh, I heard you like blue. It's like, who cares? Yeah, exactly. Or, hey, I heard you, you just signed up with that big, big customer, you know, sure. congrats. What about that's actually changed the game. It can be powerful or it can be a waste of space. Exactly. In your email. But good usage of a merch tag here, honestly. Okay. Good point. Let's transition to the pitch here. I've developed a survey tool, which will give you plenty of customer feedback. Would you like to try it? Two things from me. I like the idea of offering the trial as a gift. That's cool. Point awarded but it's lacking some credibility. How many people are using it? And even if they have zero users, what is so special about this particular feedback tool and why will it deliver plenty of customer feedback? And what do you mean by plenty? You know, are you saying 50% of your users will engage with it? That's, that's gonna be more helpful than just simply saying plenty of feedback, nothing else. Yeah, you could have something like a non-intrusive survey tool or a survey tool that follows people around, whatever, or survey tool that includes chats or does that sound like, and you would have a need for something like that, or are you willing to give it a go? Or it could be another campaign that says like, are you currently using anything at the moment? There you know, you a sort of like filtering question. Right. So um, this two. And two are you totally happy with it? So that way you kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, uh, good takeaways here. And anything else before we move on to a couple follow-ups? No, nah, let's do it. Okay, quick, quick, quick follow-up. It says, Jeremy, just checking with you on this. Classic bump email. What could this person have done to win a reply? Well, pretty much all we were like mentioning were like lacking as to what makes it special as a survey tool. Maybe it's super easy to install. You know, that would be like perfect thing as a follow up. It's like, hey, by the way, you know, we installed it on three other company within five minutes or something like that. Or it doesn't require so many, so much technical knowledge to install. Yeah, or yeah. Whatever kind of show the progress. Okay, here it's only two days, but it's a good takeaway for people who do long delay between follow ups is mention what's been achieved. The reason why I'm saying that is in the first email, he said, I developed. He didn't say like, we developed or all company developed. So yeah. it looks like a person hustling his way in, which I love, you know that. But it could be, you know, if you're developing something and then you wait like one month before giving the next follow-up, do mention what's been achieved in that month. 
you're going to win a lot because that's, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, positive persistence. Yep. Nailed it there. We've got one more follow up here. It says, and again, this is using the same subject line feedback tool for company. First name looks like you don't need a survey tool. Don't worry. I will not email you anymore. You can see my survey tool at here's a link. It is for sending single question surveys. Thanks. What the hell? What the hell? Why say it looks like you don't need a tool and then provide a link for the tool shortly after that? And, and it, we're only on like day seven. It's been a week. You know, I'm super busy. I didn't have time to look at it. Maybe it's not in the top of my priority. Why close the door straight away? That's true. It's A, it's early. And B, it's an assumption that's probably hurting the reply rate of this campaign because, you know, I'm a fan of using breakup emails. But the way this one's worded, it's not eliciting a response. It's just saying, you know, you don't need it. Here's information so that they don't even have to reply for information. It's been provided in this email. So it's balls in their court, which basically means they're not going to get back to you on this. It's almost like you say, here's the thing you, you missed. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like exactly by not replying to me on time. It's like right. you know, seriously, dude. If you really wanted on the second follow up to do like already a, a breakup email, then say stuff like, "Hey, it looks like you're busy right now. I'm moving super fast. Not going to keep on following up on you." Okay, in a nicer way, of course. Sure, sure. But uh, here's the link. I still would like to have you on board. If you have the space at some point to try it. Yeah. Go and try it. I'll be more than happy to. And that way you also leave the room open for maybe in three months time, contacting them back and say, hey, I know I contacted you like three months ago. Here's what's been done since. Right. And you keep the conversation going. I think it's just like burning your lead for absolutely nothing in exchange. It's total waste. Yeah. The other thing, too, is keep in mind this the point of this campaign I actually really like it. It's to get people to try a tool for free. And if you're reaching out to the right audience, this could be super effective. But again, I, I agree everything you said there, Jeremy. And the other thing that you could add, if I were this person and whether we are talking about um, breakup email or follow up, and I'm smart enough to figure out what the main function of that tool is, and I do that as a merch tag, I should be smart enough to figure out what tool they're already existing for getting survey. You know, are they getting that? Uh, I'm not even remember the name of that. Survey tool. Monkey. Yes, yeah, Survey Monkey or actually no. Intercom. Yeah, Intercom. More like that. I was like thinking integrated on your site. If it's not, you could always say like, "Hey, I couldn't see any of the major player for getting survey on your website." Is that something you are considering? There you because go. Because I just developed one recently that is much better than Insert X for reason Y. Is that something that you'll be willing to try? You know, I'm still in the development phase or I'm still at the uh, early beta phase or whatever that justify the fact that, you know, I'm willing to try it with you. Everyone's right, winning. Right. You don't have one. I provide you one. You don't have to pay because I still need feedback. Sure. Everyone's winning and, and everyone understands that. But here, like, you know, why would you go through the whole length of doing a merch tag for knowing the main function of that product without actually going one step further and then figuring out if that product has something already integrated on the website. And if it has, like, let's say, for example, you have Intercom or, I don't know, there is a Qualaroo or something like that I, mm -hmm. I was thinking of, right? Or user voice, for example. Then you could say, like, hey, by the way, in one of the follow-up, I know you're using, insert the thing, Qualaroo, uh, you know, user voice, whatever. But from the people who've been trying it, this is what they've been saying on, or who've been moving from that one to all one. This is what they've been saying as to why they're moving right. and what they really like about our software or some sort of like comparison that will say like, okay, well, that's interesting. Maybe I should give it a go kind of thing. Yeah. And I just have one sort of copywriting editing note here. There's a line here. It's actually the final line in this follow-up. It says, it is for sending single question surveys. This is an interesting feature but it's not a benefit and it's not clear how it's going to help my company. That's right. So great opportunity here to flip this feature into a benefit so that it's just harder to ignore, you know, make it obvious how you can change someone's day or entire company at that by turning features into benefits. Well said, Jack. Great yeah. cast. Great cast, Jeremy. Lots of teardowns, lots of tips. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Awesome.
Hey, cold emailer. Yeah, you. If you got some value from this episode, give us a high vibe by sharing a two-sentence review on iTunes. Or Stitcher or TuneIn. That works too. It's a quick way to help other growth-minded folks like us find this podcast. So they can send awesome emails. And make everyone's inbox a better place. Thanks. 